Okay, question. If we have this young lady here, and she's throwing two toys at a pool, and she wants to hit point B and point C, and she wants them to land at the same time, how fast does she have to throw both of those objects, and how long does it actually take to do it? If you come back in again, okay, stay tuned, I'll go through that problem and show you a little bit about projectile motion. Okay, this is Professor Cummings, and I wanted to go through this problem. Okay, so let's talk through it. A girl always throws the toy at an angle of 30 degrees from point A as shown. Determine the time between the throws so that both toys strike the edges of the pool B and C at the same time. With what speed must she throw each toy? Okay, so we've got this girl here who is actually throwing a toy, or two different toys, through these two different trajectories going from point A, which is her hand, to points B and points C. All right, so she's got two different projectiles, one from A to B, one from A to C, and her hand is consistently one meter high, and point A has a horizontal distance of 2.5 meters, and point C has a horizontal distance of four meters, and point C also has a vertical distance of 0 0.25 meters. All right, so this is what we're dealing with. So from that, what all do we know? Okay, so we know that number one, she always throws the toys at a consistent 30 degree angle. All right, so we've got that one down. She also, the toys strike at two different distances, you know, 2.5 meters and four meters. Uh, she's throwing them one meter from the ground. Okay, we've got that covered. Um, there are two projectiles. Okay, one from A to B and another from A to C. Okay, so again, that's important. There are two different projectiles. And the last thing we know is that the projectiles will land at the same time. Again, that's another very important uh, point to make as we start going through this problem. So we'll keep in mind these five points and we'll go through exactly what those five points actually mean as we uh, reason through this problem before we actually go through the math to solve it. All right, so this first point, she always throws the toys at 30 degrees. Well, okay, so we've got a velocity. This is the path of the velocity. We can say her hand is here. So her hand is here and she's always releasing them at this same particular uh, direction and we can just say that's the magnitude of the velocity and we'll just say that's V the magnitude of the velocity is V so since we're talking about a projectile and we've got a direction here of 30 degrees we know that we have an X and a Y component a horizontal and a vertical component to this so we, as we go through any problem we can actually look at this set it up as a horizontal or vertical uh, component we have an actual direction of 30 degrees so this is telling us that we're going to have to set this problem up with an X and Y component and everything's going to be based off of those degrees. So it'll be the magnitude times a sine of 30 which will establish our vertical and the magnitude times the cosine of 30 which will establish our horizontal velocity. But they both have the same magnitude that we're multiplying by. Okay, so that's the first thing, that, so that's the first important point to keep in mind. Points two and three, the toy, toys strike at two different distances, okay, two and a half meters and uh, four meters for C, and she's throwing them one meter from the ground. So this is enough information to know we have a coordinate system that we're gonna work with. So we're gonna have our coordinate system set up, and you know we know how what the distance in the X is going to be. We're gonna have to worry about two and a half and four meters, and we've got a vertical distance of one meter. We're gonna set up, and we're going to keep this you know these directions positive so we can look at our problem this way we establish it at the ground so we'll just say the ground is a, the zero point as far as height as well as distance in the horizontal so we'll say that she's releasing them one meter high and that our distances are in the x positive direction of two and a half and four meters and we'll also consider anything going this way such as acceleration as being negative all right, so now we've got a coordinate system that we were able to set up based on what she, what they had told us. 
So we have the coordinates and we know how we're going to start approaching this problem. So now let's see, get to our toolbox of information. Our four kinematic equations. So we have a constant acceleration. Now keep in mind these are projectiles. So we have two things we want to keep in mind when we look at these kinematic equations. The first, that acceleration in the vertical direction, you know, up and down, is going to be due to gravity. So acceleration is due to gravity. Also in the horizontal direction, that the initial velocity is going to equal to its final velocity when we deal with projectile motion. So the acceleration in the horizontal is going to be treated as zero. So we've got two constant uh, acceleration problems. So that means we can use our four kinematic equations. So what we have, we have a constant velocity between the two. And we also know all of our distance. So what we're going to do is have to find an equation that functions as a, as a function of time as well, as well as a function of height to work through our equation. So we have a common uh, time constant here and here that we can use. We could use this but we're going to go ahead and, and use uh, these two other equations because number one, we know we have a velocity that's common between the two. We do know a distance. We know all of our distances that we can work with. So we've got this covered. You know, we got a, if in the horizontal, we've got a common velocity. So this will essentially work out to, you know, two times the velocity and the twos will start to cancel. So we end up with a delta S times V times T and our T is going to be unknown. So we'll have that in common with what's going on in the vertical, which will be a delta S in the vertical, which we we'll already know. We've got a gravity constant for our, our uh, acceleration. We've got a time here. So we're going to have two equations. We're going to have two unknowns. We're going to have to solve it as simultaneous equations. So the acceleration in the horizontal is zero and the acceleration in the vertical is, is due to gravity. So points four and five. So the fourth and fifth point is there are two projectiles, one from A to B and one from A to C. Okay, so we're going to have to set this up as two problems. We're going to have a, a vertical and horizontal for A, for A to B, a vertical and a horizontal for A to C. And we also know that the projectiles land at the same time as well. So not only will they connect at the same time for the horizontal and vertical components of each projectile, but between the two projectiles, they'll both connect at B and C at the same time. Okay, so, so now we have a time constant that's gonna run through the entire problem. So here's our coordinate system. We got a coordinate system. So we're going to measure zero from here and we're going to make all of our measurements from this zero going to 0.25 and going to 0.1 and then the zero going from B that which is 2.5 and C which is four meters. And the time is common in the horizontal and vertical. We've got two projectiles with a common landing time. Okay, so we got a common landing time and we also got a common time between horizontal and vertical and we know based on that alone and these differences in distance in the X that the start times have to be different in order to have the same ending time. So one's going to have to take off a little sooner than the other in order for them to make this landing at the same time since the path is obviously longer for one over the other. So in the horizontal direction we're going to use this equation. So the difference in S, the difference between where we're starting and where we're going for B, and then where we're going, starting where we're going for C, and well as the same, excuse me, the time that it's going to take. And we know that there's a, a function of time that's common. This will be a function since we have two unknowns in it. And that same time is going to show up in this equation for our vertical. And this is based on the common time in the horizontal and vertical. So the amount of time that it takes to, to travel left to right is the same amount of time it's going to take to travel up to down. So these are our two equations and we should be able to get through our problems with these two equations, treating each one of these projectiles as its own problem and then comparing the two to figure out what the time difference it'll be between the two, two projectiles. So now we have all of our, our details in order. So now and we have our equations where 
we're going to work with. So let's go back to our problem. So we'll start off looking at projectile B. Okay, projectile B meaning that we're going to have a, a horizontal travel of two and a half meters and a vertical of one meter from her hand and 2.5 meters from the bottom to the top of the, the little dish that she's throwing it in. And that's our coordinate system. Here's all our givens. We've got an angle of 30 degrees. We've got a distance to B is two and a half. Distance to C is four meters and a height of, of one meter. And our horizontal dis distance, since this bottom is zero, we have the, you know, the distance that it's going to point B, starting from zero with a magnitude of velocity times time. Go ahead, since this distance is 2.5, starting with the zero point that x drops out and this is the x component of time so v the magnitude of, of velocity times cosine of 30 times the time that it takes to get to b so we solve this for b basically dividing both sides by this cosine of 30 and now we have a function that tells us the time which is based on this unknown which is the magnitude of the velocity that it leaves her hand Okay, so now we go to the vertical. And this is our initial equation. Again, we're looking at this going from 0.25 to one meter high. So 2.25 to one meter. We've got our velocity going in the vertical direction times our time. And we've got one half, the acceleration is now changed to gravity, again, times time squared, time travel to be squared. We start substituting in and we have V times the sine of 30, which is our X or Y component, our vertical component. But this is still the magnitude of V, so same magnitude. And we've got our acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81 going in the downward direction, so it's negative. So we have these two unknowns, magnitude of our velocity as well as our time. And over on our first equation, we've got magnitude of our velocity and our time. So we do a little substitution for the time component. We end up with this. We've eliminated one unknown. So we have one unknown in one equation. Our velocities cancel in this portion and we can solve for our velocity squared and we have the velocity as equal to 4.32 meters per second. And that's the magnitude of the velocity. Remember the magnitude of the velocity that, that's coming off of here. If we multiplied it by the cosine of 30, we'd have the horizontal velocity. Multiplied by the sine of 30, we'd have the vertical velocity. So the magnitude of the velocity leaving her hand is 4.32 meters per second. We substitute this back into this first equation and we get a time. So the entire trip for A to B is 0.669 seconds. Okay, so we're part way there. We've got a magnitude of the velocity for projectile B, or excuse me, A to B, and we've got a time that it's going to take for it to get to B. Okay, so now what's going to happen with the projectile going from uh, A to C? So the projectile going to C, again, set up our coordinate system, same coordinate system same equation you know for our horizontal component only now we have four meters instead of two and a half a magnitude of velocity and a cosine of 30 okay so this isn't the same this is a velocity for for a projectile going to C and we've got a time constant going to C and we have it set up we saw for the time constant now for our vertical that leaves with a function. Now we have our vertical coordinate, our vertical equation. Same deal, we actually substitute in, you know, for our time constant that we solved over here, as well as our sine of 30 times our magnitude of our velocity. And again, the same things start to cancel out and we end up with a velocity of 5.85 meters per second. Substitute that back in to this equation and we end up with a time go through trips A to C of 0 0.79 seconds. So now we have a velocity, magnitude velocity, that for the second projectile, 
which you know obviously should have been faster and we've got a time constant which again obviously should have been longer since the trip is longer it has to go through that same trip and it has to hit at the same time so now what time does it have to leave since we know that this has a longer trip takes longer time than the last one we need to find out how what time they need what the difference needs to be for them to release from our hand so the time difference is just the difference from the time to get to C and the time to get to B and we have 0.79 seconds minus 0.669 seconds so the distance between or the time between the difference between her hand leaving her hand is 0.121 seconds all right so all of our answers is going to be a uh, 0.121 seconds between the throws in her hand in order to get to B she has to throw it at 4.32 meters per second and in order to get to C she has to throw it at the second one at 5.8 or yeah 5.85 meters per second so this is Professor Cummings if this was helpful to you go ahead and subscribe to the channel you can also follow me on Facebook as well as uh, at the engineers reference on Google Plus so you can go to my Google Plus page and you can follow me on Twitter as well. Thanks for watching.